Oh, hello, uh, on this fine Friday afternoon. Welcome to Cypress Testing, part one. Uh, I hope that by the end of this lesson, you will be able to automate browser behavior with Cypress. You'll be able to select elements with Cypress, and you'll be able to write Cypress assertions. Um, new approach to this than I've done in the past, but hopefully it works out well. Very first thing I want us to do, though, is download Cypress, because it's fucking huge, and even just five of us doing it once will take a while. So, um, you can do this from anywhere. npm install dash g Cypress, like that. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about what Cypress is. Once you got that going. So, anybody who was in the last testing talk, we talked about the testing pyramid before, and we said that unit tests were down here, and integration tests were right here, and UI tests were here. So this is not unit tests, which in JavaScript, a lot of unit testing stuff is like, if I call this function with this argument, do I get this output? Do I get this return value? In Ruby, it might be, if I call this method on this class, uh, does this state change? Um, integration tests go like a level up, and these are more like, um, do these combinations of classes work together? Um, do these combinations of functions work together? Does this feature work? UI test is uh, a little bit more, and like there's very fluid names on this, which we'll talk about in a sec, but I kind of like the term end-to-end -end for this. I also like uh, acceptance test. There's a very subtle difference between all three of those, but they broadly refer to the same kind of thing. Um, and by and large, we're looking at something from the user's perspective here. So a user doesn't know about functions. User knows about, I go to this page and click this button and then this thing happens. So if Mocha was our tool for stuff kind of in this area, Kind of also use it for stuff like this. Cypress is going to be our tool for up here. So one of the reasons I'm I want to start with this rather than like the Mocha unit testing stuff is you don't need to know a ton about testing philosophy to be able to write pretty good Cypress tests. Because uh, this is exactly what you're using to test your apps right now. I go to this page, I click on this button, and I know that I go to this page and this thing shows up on the page. Like all of that stuff that you do by hand, you can do it exactly like that in the Cypress test and it works. And once you're comfortable with that, like Cypress is a wrapper around Mocha and a lot of other things. You'll already know some like totally useful syntax for this kind of stuff. Um, what questions do you have so far? About how Cypress kind of fits into the picture. Wait, there's end to end that basically front end to back end? That... So, yeah, th and this is like the difference between a UI test and end to end test is an end to end test also includes the server and the database. It's everything from the user's perspective. Can they do this feature? A UI test technically, uh, you stub out the back end. Uh, and this is why Cypress themselves uses the term integration rather than UI or end-to-end -end, uh, for what they do. You like intercept every call to the back end and just give it a static response because you're not testing the back end also. And then an acceptance test is like a specific thing in Agile, whereas like these are the things that your product owner said uh, are required for passing. And so if they pass those, then your product owner says you're good to go. 
Um, but like these are very academic distinctions. They end up being fundamentally kind of the same thing. Cool. What else? Other questions so far? Okay. I got Cypress installed. Do you have Cypress installed? Cool. So um, let's go into a new folder. Um, I'm going to call this E2E testing practice. And um, I'm going to do, I think I can just type Cypress open in here and it'll do something. Dope. So just type Cypress open in that folder. Oh, sick. It, uh, it picked up on the fact that I didn't actually put anything in there. I was wondering if it would let me get away with it. So um, let's put, I don't know how I want to do this. Let's do npm init dash y. So that'll just start a uh, npm, npm project. I'm going to npm install Cypress. Mm. Dash capital D Cypress. It solves it as a development dependency. And if I Cypress open now, well, let me go. What if I npx Cypress open. All right, that's what I wanted. Let's do npx Cypress open. Um, all right, so it just installed a ton of shit into the folder. And if you just hit run all specs up in the corner here, what you'll see is it's going to the Cypress website and it's running all these tests. It's checking that every feature in Cypress works. That's it, that's what Cypress does. It automates stuff in a browser and lets you run assertions on it. It is testing itself right now. Um, what was the command line? Sure. Um, so you're going to npm install dash capital D Cypress and then Cypress open. Or, sorry, npx Cypress open. So when we get a running Cypress test, it should look something kind of like that. You can hit this uh, stop running thing to quit it. And um, if we go over here and kill that, it uh, closes Cypress. So now what I want to do, if we take a look at um, what, uh, what I have now, this no module folder pack, that's the stuff that I did with my npm init. I have this Cypress JSON file, which I believe is just an empty object. Yep. And uh, I have this Cypress folder here that has all the cool Cypress shit in it. We do some exploring. We'll see we've got fixtures and plugins and screenshots and support. Uh, especially for right now, but often just generally, you don't need to do anything with these. Integration and examples and these spec files, that's kind of like more where our magic is. So what I want you to do is go into the Cypress integration folder and we're going to make um, 
a new folder, yeah, fuck it. We'll just make a file. And we'll call it um, app.spec.js. And then, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to do there. No. And then let's uh, just delete that examples folder, rmrf examples. So now what I'm going to do is npx cypress open in one uh, terminal tab. And over here, I'm going to open up that uh, spec file that we made. Yep. Note that if you do it, did it wrong, just like I just did, it'll keep making like Cypress folders inside of Cypress folders inside of Cypress folders. You have to run that from the root. They're like, why well, can't see any of my shit? Why do I? Why did my uh, folder get so big all of a sudden? That's why. All right, cool. So now I go over here and I have nothing. Awesome. If I go to app.spec.json, those of you who were in the Mocha lesson may remember this. We say describe. Describe takes a string and a function. And inside of describe, it, which takes a string and a function, and then our tests go in here. So we can say something like, I want us all to test with that practice Cypress site, which I pulled up. If you go to example.cypress.io, That'll take you here. And let's go to this querying area. So what we want to do is navigate to this page and do stuff like click on buttons and um, type in fields and that kind of stuff. And that will, that's going to knock out our first two objectives here. Once you get there, we're gonna, uh, let's do this first one. It can click on a button. So we'll say describe querying page. It clicks on buttons. And what we'll do in here is say sci.visit. You're going to give it that URL. And then we need to figure out how to get this button. So if I element inspect that, all right. It has an ID of query BTN. Please name your shit better than that. Query BTN. So to select it, I'm going to say side.get. Query dash BTN, and then I'm going to click on it. If I go over to this buddy and run those tests, yeah, you can even see it clicked on it because there's a little like I just got clicked a little earlier on this. But we got a passing test. If there were no button on the page, or we had something that doesn't exist like that, this test is going to fail. There you go. That's your first um, element query and your first action. Questions so far?
So if, when you do npx cypress run, you get this uh, GUI. So I'll start it over again. Go over here, kill this, npx cypress open. And that's going to pull up this uh, GUI. You can click on a file there, or you can say run all specs. And we'll get this. At the top level. Um, because that's how I was raised. Um, <laughs> apparently, like the Cypress people don't like you doing that anymore. NPX Cypress Open uh, will do it based off of the one you installed. But when I was growing up, we globally installed it. God damn it! So I can confused. Questions so far? In the in the root, so if I'm looking at uh, so right here with node modules and the Cypress folder and all that kind of stuff, that's where I ran npx Cypress open. If you try to do that inside of one of these folders, it's going to make a new Cypress folder, and you'll just incept yourself into hell. Other questions? OK, so what I want you to do right now is uh, practice with this a little bit. So some other ones that you can do. You can click, and we can also type. So if I, for example, if I go over to that page, and there's this form over here, and I do dot type on that, I can say that's the first one. I can say it types in forms. I can go to the page, I can find whatever the selector is, and I can tell the browser to type something in there. So I want to see if you can use your newfound Cypress knowledge to do some stuff on this page. Go for it. Also, this thing in Cypress, this is an actual Chrome window. So you can see console log stuff, you can element spec, you can do all that kind of shit. Is there like any condition for naming the test? Like or if it is described in the thing? Like uh yes and don't worry about them just yet. So in my how to teach testing notes, uh, I have automating the browser. Selecting and asserting things, and from that organization, the next one. Okay. Just know that every it needs to be inside of a describe, and that's probably enough for right now. Okay. But the it is your actual test, and describe is just some kind of grouping.
Christ. Uh, since it's a browser, you can navigate also. So I um, found this utilities link and clicked on it, and it took me to the utilities page. Three passing tests. Get elements. So let's talk about assertions. Now, one of the cool things about UI tests is we actually get some assertions, assertions kind of like magic built in. So if I try to click on this button, but the button doesn't exist, it fails. Cool, that's basically an assertion. Uh, if I try to type this stuff in, any of these elements don't exist, that's a fail. If I try to type it in, but it's not something you can type in, it fails. So I actually get some uh, level of assertion for free. Um, but other times, we want to type in this field and then assert that maybe that showed up in the field. This is like handy in React apps when uh, you want to make sure that your uh, controlled form worked correctly. So maybe we do something like sci.input name and then sci.input name should, that's our magic keyword. Cypress assertions all start with should. And then we do what's called a, a chai BDD chainer. This syntax is cryptic as fuck. Uh, you get used to it though. So it's say like, should have text, comma, hey buddy. And Why isn't that one working? Oh, it's because it's not text. It's a value. Um, have value. There we go. So we can do things like that. This is an assertion. Now, Kyle, how do I figure out this crazy ass uh, syntax? Um, the, I actually gave a talk on this a couple months ago that might be of interest to you. So if we go to slides.com slash Kyle Coberly, intro to BDD syntax. So, okay, so there's three different kinds of uh, particles. There's uh, chainers, two, uh, have in the example we just did, these are chainers. They literally don't do anything. They just make it more readable. Because we're supposed to make this read kind of like a sentence. So we're saying input name should have value, hey buddy. It'll also work if I leave off the have. Still green. But, um, should value reads kind of stupid. So we put in a chainer to make it more readable. That's the first type of particle. 
Second type is an assertion. So have a value. Value is the actual assertion there. Um, other ones are um, things like equal. So if I grab some element, I could say should equal or should deep dot equal or something like that. And that's the other one. Flags. So equal will compare the values of two things. But if you do objects, you're comparing like whether they're literally the exact same thing. Or if you compare object values, you modify it. Other good examples of flags are things like should not have value, just the opposite of whatever. And my organization of both these things are chainers, like that, assertions are kind of like that, and flags are things like that. And if you want to see what this looks like on the Cypress page, cypress.io, docs, under um, references, under the assertions reference, it's got examples of all that. So it looks like a fuck ton of them, and it is. But for like what y'all are doing right now, things like have text and have value probably get the job done. Cool. Questions so far? How do you do the before thing? We're going to do that in a sec. Um, there's one, um, one more thing I wanted to show you. Oh, if we go over to like the API for Cypress under, uh, commands and assertions, we have like, have all these things. So this is like psi dot whatever. So if I do psi.url, it gives me the current URL. So like I navigate here, I should be on the, um, on the uh, utilities page, not the querying page anymore. So if I visit this and then I click on that link, psi.url should equal and then I can say, actually, this is kind of neat. This is an old old tester's trick. I don't know. It should equal whatever, blank string. And then when I run this and it fails, expected this to equal blank string. Thank you. <laughs> Just copy that in. and how it passes. <laughs> so you're testing navigation around your page, something like that. All right, so Toby asked about like the before thing. You notice at the, at the beginning of every single fucking one of these, we have to do this site.visit. That's not, that's not good. In any describe block, we can do before each which takes a function, and it will do that before each test. So if I put that in the before each, I can take it out of all of these. Now I've re removed that repetition. Pretty cool. Questions? Mm -hmm. 
Those of you who are in the, uh, the unit testing lesson, want to see some real dopeness. Check this shit out. Um, since all this stuff is just kind of like a wrapper around Mocha and Chai and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> we can still like do all the same stuff. Um, so, uh, let's see. Does it start with chai? Let me see. If I write a sum function, which I could also like import from my actual app module or something. References, assertions. I wonder if I thought you got chai for free. Let me. No, it's got chai also. That's what like the should should also come some chai. Um, see, Cypress bundles the popular chai assertion library. I was kind of expecting it to just be that, though. Oh, you might be right there, actually. Yep, there we go. That's it. Um, expected two to equal three. So I change it to number one plus number two. And I got all green tests. So you can also write your unit tests with Cypress. This should get you pretty far. Uh, to give you an idea of where this goes next. Async mocking. So we probably want to not necessarily always make API requests. Um, and Cypress actually has a pretty cool system for catching those and just giving you static values back. It makes them run a lot faster too. Um, we do want to talk about some systems for how we nest describes and what things classify as an it because it takes a lot of practice and it's also um, different than it is for unit testing. Um, test selectors, I can just tell you what that is real quick because there's a good example of it on this page. Instead of trying to get something by its class or its ID or something like that, your best bet is to use a, a data attribute. So on the element in your actual code, um, class equals whatever, and then data dash test dash whatever. It's called a test selector. So you can change the class name, you can change the ID name, you can change the element name, you can change what's inside of it, you can change whatever. As long as it has the same test selector, um, your tests don't have to change. It's kind of nice. Um, 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 environment variables. So like maybe your app is set up slightly differently in testing than it is in development. Like it's got a different endpoint, something like that. 
Um, and then time. Time is the hardest thing to test. And like, uh, if I submit this, it displays the time it was submitted correctly. Okay, well, <laughs> like, then you need to like update the test every minute. Like that doesn't work. So what you do instead is uh, Cypress has some built-in tools for um, how you manipulate time kind of automagically. Like man's clock. So when you call sci.clock, it overrides JavaScript's entire date time system and sets the current date to January 1st, 1970 and you can just kind of go from there. You can also increment it, so if it's supposed to do this and then uh, one minute later this thing happens, well, unless you want that test to take a fucking minute to run every time, what you can do is um, use the tick method. There you go. So you do clock.tick and it just magically makes the clock go forward a second. It's kind of nice. And then, what else do I have? Yeah, if you can do those things, you are on your way to being a super duper good tester. Awesome, the rest of it's just practice. What do you want to know? So, first of all, Google won't let you do that. Um, the, the only like external site you can really do any of this shit with is the Cypress site. Any like competent site will block you because you don't want your bandwidth to pay for your robot to fucking slam their site. <laughs> um, uh, but if you wanted to do such a thing, you do "Hey buddy" um, and then enter like that. Uh, and you can do character modifiers, you can do all kinds of shit. Um, what you cannot do right now is tab. It's the only one that doesn't work. And they actually give you a really cool error message on that. Tab is a supported character sequence. You'll want to use the command sci.tab, which is not ready yet, but when it's done, that's what you'll use. <laughs> Going once, going twice. Thank you.